The Ghanaian space on social media has been very hot in the last couple of weeks with this whole revelation from Yvonne's memoir and most recently, Sarkodia's response. And over the last kind of 48 hours since the track from Sarkodia came out, I have watched and listened to different viewpoints from different social media content creation. Our content creators and I have a thing or two to say about their reactions, their responses, my opinion and I'm entitled to that opinion just like everybody else is. The big question that I see a lot of people asking is if Yvonne is able to talk about her story and publish her story, why can't Sarkodia speak too? I don't have any problems with Sarkodia responding. He has every right to speak, just like Yvonne does. Yvonne shared her story, how she saw it. It was her story. And nobody else can write somebody else's story from their point of view. That's how Yvonne felt. Those were her words. And that's how she felt. How, how can you argue somebody's story? So that's Yvonne's story. Now, Sarkodia has every every right to respond to the story, the uh, publication, the revelations, the shocking truths or, or otherwise. He has every right to respond. So I have no issues with him speaking back. But the bit that I have the issue with is with the disrespect and insults that he had to give back in his song, which came out between 24 and 48 hours. That was completely unnecessary. Nobody has any argument about him responding, but half of the song was just about degrading women, just like he does in other tracks of his. And I saw it really as a missed opportunity because Sakodia is not only known on the Ghanaian scenes, he's an international artist and he could have used this platform, this mouthpiece and this opportunity given to him by Yvonne to right the wrongs, to set the record straight, but more importantly, to gain public sympathy, especially from women. But as he's done in a lot of his tracks prior to this one, all about degrading women and making it out as if he came out of a stone or a piece of wood, because most of his tracks that concern women, don't shed women in any positive light. And I'm quite surprised that this man has a mother, has a wife and has a daughter. So the issue isn't with him reacting. The issue isn't with him re responding. The issue is what came out of the response because half of what he said was uncalled for. Yvonne in her memoir stated the facts without disrespect or insult. She never insulted him. She just named names. And it's the naming that it seems that a lot of people are getting uncomfortable about because it has to be with their idol that a lot of people love. But a lot of his tracks, in my opinion, have a lot of degradation of women. And I don't like that. You can talk about public or societal issues without pitching one agenda uh, against the other. And that's what he does in a lot of his tracks. Very disrespectful towards women. And that's what a lot of women are uncomfortable with, including me. Now, in my opinion, as I said, the shades were not necessary. However, ma many men Yvonne slept with is not the issue. However, many women he also slept with was not the issue according to Yvonne's memoir. For those of us who read, and that is the next point that I'm coming to, is that I see that a lot of people are just following the crowds without actually reading the book and knowing exactly what it is that Yvonne said. And that's very disappointing and quite frankly, very sad. One of the things that Yvonne sought to achieve by all of this is to get Ghanaians to read. But many people are not reading. Many people are just following other people's opinions about what they claim was in the book without actually owning the book, buying the book or reading the book to know exactly what Yvonne says in the memoir. And to me, if you really want to give an objective opinion about what has happened, 
it is important that you've actually read the book and know exactly what she said and not take sentences and words out of context because if you don't read the book holistically you're not able to see what Yvonne was trying to depict here so people are going on about pregnancy and naming him and that's all that the bashing has been about very disappointing and if you read the book for those of us who have gone through the trouble of actually reading the book there's two things that you would find Yvonne never denied that she was a virgin when she was with Sakwadeh neither did she say that she uh, he was the only person that she had intimate relationships with that was not mentioned in the book what she talked about was a pregnancy the pregnancy was caused by Sakwadeh that is what she said so the issue isn't about however many men she slept with or otherwise, but the reason why this young man, Sakodia, is mentioned is because he's the one that got her pregnant. Fine, they get pregnant. It's his word against hers. He says he never asked her to terminate. She says he didn't want the child and went ahead to get rid of it because after his reactions towards the pregnancy, thinking about his career, thinking about the fact that he had a serious girlfriend that he was going to be married to and all of that, being pregnant with another woman was inconvenient. And so he wanted out of that. Now, the issue that Yvonne had, because she was not ready to be a mom neither, Many people are going off about the fact that she's a cougar. She slept with a younger guy, yada, yada. Is Yvonne Nelson the only girl, older woman, who has slept with a younger man? Even our ex-president, Kufo, is he not younger than his wife? Does that make her a cougar too? For being or married to a man that is younger than she is. I don't see how that is relevant in this whole thing. But to me, the whole issue is this is that a pregnancy happened. A pregnancy happened and he knows about it. He didn't deny that he wasn't responsible for it. He didn't deny that a conversation or a discussion was had about termination. The final consensus, whether he wanted me or me, was they were going to terminate the pregnancy. He wanted her to use his doctor. She was uncomfortable with that and wanted to use somebody that had been recommended to her by a friend as a, as a better expert at the situation. Now, if Sarkodia wasn't old enough or um, mature enough to look after a pregnancy, how then did he have a doctor, his own family doctor, who was better at dealing with this issue than anybody else? Question. But the issue is this, is that the reason why Yvonne is pained is because of his actions or inactions post-operative. She finally ended up having the pregnancy terminated, but the aftermath of it, for somebody to drive you to the place where the termination is to happen with a manager, which he's not denying. If he didn't do it, he could say so, but he hasn't. So let's assume that he did drive her to the place for the termination. Now, termination happens and Sakwa goes cold turkey on her. No calls, no comments, no nothing. Check on her to see whether she was dead or alive. And that is what she is hurt about per her memoir. To me, from where I'm sitting, I have no issues with Sakwadia responding. None whatsoever. And if he had just replied and said, what he had to say, the facts on the case from his point of view, what happened, his um, narration from his point of view, the facts just like Yvonne did, and then went on to say that he didn't realize that his inactions post-operative caused her that much pain and that he apologized. For that part of the whole thing, this whole case would have died down. People would have stopped even giving relevance to this book. And he, Sarkodia, would have come on tops. People would have given him applause and standing ovations across the world for being able to stand up and be the man and take accountability for his actions or otherwise or lack of it. But no. He didn't or was unable to see this as a golden opportunity to redeem himself, but rather went further down the gutter 
something I least expected from him. I thought in his silence that he was actually trying to prep to plan to see which angle to tackle this from. But unfortunately, he chose the wrong angle. And so a lot of people are up in arms against what he said. The issue, let's not get it twisted here. The issue has nothing to do with Sarkozy responding. The issue has nothing to do with women wanting him to be silent. I didn't want him to be silent. I wanted him to reply. I was waiting anxiously for his response, but this response was absolutely disappointing and quite frankly, very sad and a missed opportunity for something that he could have turned around in his favor in these times. So he missed the opportunity and all I'm hearing on social media is people going off about if, if, if somebody says something and you say nothing, then people are just going to assume that what she said is true. None of us was there to what happened with Sarkozy and Yvonne. But Yvonne has put her narrative out there in a book, which many people who are commenting on this thing haven't even bothered to read a page or a chapter or even a paragraph, not to talk of a sentence of that book. And if you haven't read the book, I, I honestly don't think that you've earned the right, really, to be um, enlightened about what was said in the book and therefore give objective opinions. You're just going based on what crowds of people are saying and also commenting blindly without knowing what the book says. I don't know Yvonne Nelson. I'm not an advocate of hers. Yeah, she's a woman. And from that point of view, I love her. Sarkozy is a man, he's a musician, he's an artist, he's a brother, he's a human being. And I love him too. But having said that, that doesn't mean that when one party is pitched against the other, that this issue has to become about who was the victor and who was the victim here. That is completely not what this is about at all. And if those of us who have had and taken the time to read the book actually Yvonne has a chapter about her regrets in her life. And I actually applaud her that she has the boldness to say the good, the bad, and the ugly of her life. Not very many people have the boldness, the cojones, the ability, and the confidence to actually own their truth and speak their truth. And so from that perspective, I applaud her for that that she has the bravery to talk about things that people would shy away from and hide in a closet because we don't want people to know how badly our poop smells. But she did. And she had the confidence and, and the pride to talk about her story, both good, both bad, both ugly, and has a chapter about her regrets. And if you take the trouble to read that, you would know that it's not a proud moment for Yvonne neither. She's not happy about the things that she had to say about her life, but it's still her life, her narrative, her opinion, her impressions, and nobody can take that away from her. And nobody is saying otherwise. The Sarkozy couldn't respond. He could, but it didn't have to come with insults, not just as Yvonne, because he, he, he never mentioned her, but then any woman listening to that music and thinking that it's a proud moment for him. I, I, I just don't know. It wasn't nice. And it just feels like a muddy gutter and people shoving themselves deeper in the trench and in the mud. Nobody has no issues with Sarkozy speaking. It's just about the way he chose to go about it. He could have said his piece respectfully without all the shades that he threw, completely unnecessary in my opinion. And the lessons are countless. But the main thing that is quite shocking for me and the reason why this camera is on this morning is that nobody seems to be talking about the emotional trauma, the emotional debris, the traumatic experiences that Yvonne is having to deal with day in day out that that is completely missed from the whole narrative because that is what is a huge highlight from her memoir but that point has been missed and it's all just about who slept with who her body count how could she sleep with multiple men and get herself pregnant she got what she deserved it's her fault she's a cougar like it's just shocking shocking 
She's not denying none of that. It's not a proud moment. She is saying that the guy went cold turkey and it hurt. If you could just apologize for that, the world would be a happier place. And so I'm really disappointed at a lot of people that have commented on this thing. A lot of people that I had the utmost respect for. A lot of women and also a lot of men. Because it just feels like the narrative in, in, in our culture, in our community has not changed at all. Nothing has changed. In 2023, people complete, continue to think in a particular way. And I find that very sad that sometimes men who have wives, mothers, um, female relatives, even daughters think in a particular way. It's almost as if a woman is walking outside and is, is stepped on or a man steps on her toes. And when she complains, instead of the man apologizing for stepping on her toes, he says, oh, but I wasn't the only man that stepped on your toe. Yeah, but you're the one who broke the toe. So why don't you just accept your part in the game and say, oh, I didn't realize that my actions or lack of it actually made you feel horrible. And I'm really sorry for my part in that. And just let sleeping dogs lie. No, he had to try to um, dig further into the mud and try to, to win browning points, which he hasn't. And so let's not get it twisted. The issue isn't about him responding. It's about the response and the quality and content of what he, he said in his, in his response. It's a missed opportunity from what I can see. And it's very sad. It's very sad that in 2023, it's okay for a man to throw shades at a woman in different kinds of song tracks and as much as he wants to. But when the woman goes, then goes back to complain or say that, she was traumatized by certain actions or inactions of the fella, then everybody is up in arms and bashing her for that. Very sad day. And that's, that's just my feeling. I would never advise any brother, son, cousin, uncle, father, nephew of mine to treat any woman like that. If somebody says you did something wrong and it hurt them, the simplest thing to do is to apologize. You can't argue somebody's feeling and how your actions make them feel. If I say I'm hurt, I'm hurt. How can you, how can you argue that? But that is all I'm seeing on social media. It's very sad, actually. It really is very sad that that is how a lot of us are trying to see it. But it is also an advice to women to choose better. If you choose people who are street boys, they give you street girl treatment and then call you out that you're also a street girl. If you don't want to be called out like that, make better choices. The choice of men or sorts of men that you choose to associate with. And that is advice to the sisters as well. And I hope it's well taken. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just, I'm just disappointed at the reactions and what people are saying. And most importantly, how my brother chose to handle this not in very good taste at all and it's very sad today is actually a very sad day for me that this is how the story is going the narrative is going in 2023 pathetic